I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today I'm driving the recently updated Alfa Romeo Giulietta. But this isn't just any Giulietta, this is the new Veloce, which is hiding quite a surprise under that shapely bonnet. Because in there, the Giulietta has the 1.75 litre Turbo 4 from Alfa Romeo's 4C, which is a mini supercar. So while the Giulietta remains a fairly practical five-door hatch that's livable every day, there's definitely something special going on in this Veloce trim when you consider the engine, plus the fact that this car has an electronically controlled, mechanically locking front differential. Well, this car is priced just short of a Golf GTI, so could the Giulietta Veloce be the hot hatch that you've been looking for? Well, let's jump inside and start finding out. The Giulietta's cabin is best described as honest. Right up front, if you're a person that can't get past the period features like this overly large steering wheel and the scratchy plastics about the place, then the Giulietta won't be the car for you. But if you can get over those things, and you should, then you'll find the accommodations pretty nice in here. Firstly, the Veloce Sport seats are absolutely lovely. They're trimmed in a mix of Alcantara and leather. They're super supportive and comfortable over long, hard driving, even if the seat bases are a little bit short, having been designed for Italians. The five inch touchscreen up here runs FCA's Uconnect software. And while it's frankly a little bit too small, it is easy to use. The navigation gets your routes right. The audio is simple to understand and it sounds great through the thumping nine speaker Bose stereo, which has very deep bass. As for the practicality, well, it's okay. There's a very handy central box up here on the dash. There's an okay size cup holder between the seats. And well, the door bins, they can just fit a medium size bottle. So the back seats of the Giulietta. Well, they're pretty much just enough for your two kids. That's really the point of these back seats. They're not really meant for carrying big people all the time. So you can see that for me at six foot, I've got yeah, just enough headroom back here and just enough legroom sitting behind myself. But fitting three people across, that would be a bit of a squeeze. One cool thing is that there's actually a second sunroof back here with its own sunshade. That's not something you see very often in a car in this class, so that's very cool. There is an air vent back here, which is good to keep the airflow coming through. There's also a fold down armrest here, which I can just get down with a couple of cup holders. And that's a good thing that they're there because door bins don't really exist in this car. You open up the Giulietta's manual tailgate by pressing in the new Alfa Romeo crest. And once you've got that boot open, you'll find that there's actually a really good space in there. So there's 350 liters, definitely competitive with the class that the Giulietta sits in. Now it is quite a deep boot, which means you've got a bit of a lip to lift your suitcases over. Not a huge deal though. You uh, have a hook over here to keep your delicate shopping from rolling around. There's a 12 volt socket in the boot as well and a tiny little uh, hard space over to one side to stop small things from rolling around. Now there is a pass through but you can fold down those seats if you need more space as well. Although the standard Alfa Romeo Giulietta comes with a 1.4 litre turbo engine that's a familiar power plant from other Alfa Romeo and FCA products, it's the Veloce that's the special one because that comes with the 4C's 1.7 litre turbo 4 making 177 kilowatts of power and 340 newton metres in this application. That's pretty powerful and pretty talky and it places the Giulietta right in competition with cars like the Volkswagen Golf GTI Performance and the Ford Focus ST. However, unlike those cars which come with an option of automatic or manual, you can only get the Giulietta with a six-speed double-clutch automatic, which is a little bit unusual for an Italian product, but it's simply because this is the 4C engine, and that was the car that was built around speed first and foremost, and a double-clutch automatic is unbeatable in that department. And a great thing about the Giulietta is its DNA system, which is its adjustable driving modes between dynamic, natural, and all-weather. And there's a really strong difference in driving character between all all three of those modes. So in dynamic, you get a different shift map. You get the car hanging onto gears a little bit longer, not too long though, and you get really nice crisp upshifts with a little bit of a blip that sounds great. However, a little bit more oral theater with some pops and crackles would elevate the experience even higher. The power and torque comes on really nice and strong. There's a particularly meaty mid-range in this car, although it has quite a lot to give at the low end as well. However, upshifting a little bit short in order to capture that mid-range is the best way to punt this car at high speed. Another thing that the dynamic mode does is it also changes the steering weight. 
it changes the throttle mapping and it also engages Alfa Romeo's mechanically locking front differential which is ele electronically controlled and available in either dynamic or all weather but not in the natural mode. Now the diff really makes a difference. Once again, it's not quite to the level of intensity as that that you get in the Volkswagen uh, Golf GTI Performance, but it's pretty damn good and it opens up some real potential for hard and fast cornering in this car. The steering weight is also bang on. In dynamic, it's a little heavy around town, but at speed it lets you really load up the wheel in this car and have a great sense of feel of the road. And in natural, it makes it nice and easy to drive around town. In fact, the crisp steering and the level of handling available with the differential and this car's low centre of gravity reveal the tyres to be the weak spot. In Australia, the Veloce is fitted with some lower end Pirelli tyres on spec and simply they find their limit of grip quite quickly. So upgrading the car to something like a P0 tyre would open up another plateau of performance. Tyres aside, the Giulietta Veloce succeeds where just about every Alfa Romeo ever has. It tugs at your heartstrings. Economically, a Golf GTI would make more sense, but emotionally, line up the German and the Italian, punt them both up a mountain in anger, and I dare you to walk away with the Golf. Just try it someday.